Are we having fun with all these boots on the ground episodes? Should we do another one today? Let's do it. Welcome to episode 36 of my lunch break. I hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new, welcome. And I want to thank all of our sponsors over on Patreon. Thank you to FlatEarthDave.com. You can check out his app. I'll put the link in the description and you can use my referral code, MLB. The app is awesome. It shows a lot of videos that are really hard to find. They've got them all in great playlists. He also has my lunch break on the homeschool section of the app, which is really cool. Thank you for that. Thank you to Maddie Kevs, Rebecca K, The Lady Lacey Show, Michael Hastings, Jason Brunson, Millicent, Christopher Arietta, Don Gaston, and Victor Perez. You guys are all awesome and helping this channel out a lot. And for $19.99 a month, you can also be a sponsor of this channel. I'll put that link right in the description below. Thank you. Here we are at the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, and focused in on the Altgeld Hall. Construction began on June 10th, 1896, and took a little over a year to complete, which is not an issue in the 1800s. Of course, we all know this by now. Which is completely insane. One year to build this? In 1896? And what is with the current day construction on these places? First Detroit, now here. In both places, they aren't even doing anything that I can see. Are they just putting up scaffolding and just going to take a picture and make it black and white to make it look old and rewrite the history and pretend like it's just being built again? I wouldn't be shocked at all if they do this all the time and we're just figuring this out. And are you ready to blow the narrative away? Are you ready to have some fun this week? Let's do it. There were so many architects that could draw like this in the 1800s that they needed to hold a design contest. Are you kidding me? And this isn't even the best part. Let's keep reading. The trustees awarded the prize to Edward, a young man with no experience in building design. I'm not gonna lie to you. The first time I read this, I laughed out loud. How insane is this? Young Edward gets to build this and he has no experience in building ever in his whole life. Take a look at this place. This place is more impressive than pretty much anything we construct today. Yet, it was built in a year by a random guy who has no previous experience. What have we just found? I feel like this should open everyone's eyes at this point. This is not logical thinking to believe this insane story. Now, if you continue reading below, they say the cornerstone was laid on September 11th. Interesting. So not June like we're told earlier. So 13 months and this thing was all wrapped up and ready to use. No mention of any construction company, of course. No mention of how many construction workers were needed. Where did the materials come from? Nothing, just simply finished. Now, we have talked about bells before and how, of course, in my opinion, and many others' opinion, the previous civilization were extremely aware of frequencies and sound vibration healing powers. These bells were no ordinary bells. This building is holding the Altgeld chimes. Installed atop the 132 foot tower are 15 bells, weighing a total of seven and a half tons. At this point, this building's narrative is beyond sketchy. Which company was responsible for the bell installation? Supposedly, this was a gift from a graduation class, but the fact that it no longer works should raise a few eyebrows. Does it not work anymore because it is now hundreds of years old in my opinion yes i'm just going to be honest i am 99.9 percent .9 sure this was a gift but not from a graduation class it was a gift from a past civilization and we have no idea how to operate it each lever is marked with a musical note giving it almost a complete chromatic scale uh is anyone else's graduation class giving away complete chromatic scale bells 132 feet in the air this year? Of course not. The Altgeld Hall, amazing stuff. I was gonna go over the Alpha Delta Phi Fraternity House, which was also supposedly built in just one year, but I kept scrolling down and of course, it was demolished in 2018. They got to it before we did, which is another reason why this research is very important right now. We all need to understand which building to look out for. There should be no demolition going on without us even noticing. And I wouldn't be able to find another old world building on this campus, would I? Well, of course I will. But it also wouldn't be built in one year, would it? You bet it is. The Alpha Gamma Delta Fraternity House. And this one is still here. But wait, what is this? 
Did the narrator get lazy and use the same sentence for multiple buildings and think that nobody would ever notice? French electric style. Popularized in America after World War I, was it? Well, if you didn't catch it the first two times, here they write the same sentence, yet again, for another building. So we definitely know that we have the same author for these narratives. And is this individual trustworthy? Well, we have caught this individual in a few lies already. If someone lies to me once, they might get a pass. Lie to me twice, now you have a liar. All of these narratives are no longer considered the truth in my eyes. Now let's continue. Again, I have mentioned in past episodes how I am fully confident in my opinion that these current day college buildings all around the United States, and for that matter, around the world, are found and repurposed. They are the reason that a college or university now sit on that specific site. And of course the sorority groups get the good buildings. And as I've mentioned in the past, normally an architect will get the nod for a few old world buildings. A great way to explain them away with one guy. As for this George Ramsey guy, he was in charge of this masterpiece that was built in a quick year, as well as the Virginia Theater, located right down the road and built seven years before in 1921. They don't give any information on how long the construction process was, so it probably only took a couple hours in 1921. And here we have a restoration process that didn't seem like much of a restoration process, and rather a demolition and replacement process. The locals were not happy, and this is when you know they removed things that were from the old world. So I went and I walked around this area a little and found this building. This used to be the United States Post Office. Now it is a cultural center. It's not the name that I'm interested in, obviously. Look at these windows. They were constructed before this road. They had to leave space here so that they didn't close the windows up. This is crazy stuff. In my opinion, this is proof that this building and many other buildings in this area are much bigger than we can see. How can anyone look at this building and not have questions? Windows under the ground level, but needing to chop out the road so that the windows aren't underground leading to nothing. How many of these buildings have exactly that? When you go in their basements, you look out the window and all you see is dirt. And over here, right across the street, you can clearly see that these buildings were here before the roads. Look at how they have filled these windows in and how the sidewalk is coming up higher and higher on the building, covering more and more of the building as we go. Even this closed up window right here is basically underground now. This is not the way it was originally constructed at all. It's very strange. And I bet you anything that this building has windows in the basement that look straight at the dirt or are covered up with brick. And if anyone thinks that this is normal to brick up your windows on so many old world buildings, I totally agree with you. I'm actually gonna go brick up all my windows on my house right now. And half of my other window in the back is gonna look like it's going underground. And the other half will be above ground. And that's completely normal. Uh, no it's not. How ridiculous does that sound? And yet, we see it all over the world. We now have nine episodes where we have gone and seen an old world building. They're all on the Boots on the Ground playlist here on YouTube. Everywhere from Scotland to California, Michigan and Illinois. And we have much more on the way. The old world is everywhere, and we're working on exposing it all. We have plans to visit New York within a year, and I would love to go back to Europe as well as Australia. The time for walking past these buildings, unaware of what's right next to us, needs to end. We all know, deep down, that these buildings have a deeper meaning, a hidden past. We can feel it just by looking at it. They are different. They hold the keys to the past civilization. These buildings are in nearly every town in the world, and like we saw today, with the Alt Guild Hall in Urbana. But did you know that there's another Alt Guild Hall in Illinois? I'll be visiting this castle building and hopefully walking through it very soon. Oh, and there's another one at Southern Illinois University, of course. It's very clear that this civilization was worldwide. This architecture blows ours away. It lasts forever and it doesn't need our help. We've proven that it withstands earthquakes and it wasn't built by a random guy that doesn't have any previous experience in just a year. That I can guarantee you. When you understand that the previous civilization was able to construct like this, you can then go deeper and ask, what else were they capable of? What other technology did they have? And what other technology did they leave behind? Just waiting for us to discover it, like we're beginning to right now. At the time of recording this, I was unaware of what I just read. 
and what I just read made me kind of sick to my stomach. Here on the Facebook page for the University of Illinois, they are destroying this building. It's not gonna look anything like how we saw it in this video. It's gonna be modernized, and you can see the picture right here. They are actively destroying these buildings, and it's really sad, to be honest. People are excited about it in the comments below on this Facebook page, and it's really too bad. So this video will probably be one of the last videos that anybody will ever see this building as it is being destroyed. Don't forget that there are a bunch of brand new t-shirts. You can find that right below this video. Every purchase really helps support the channel and goes towards more boots on the ground work. Liking this video and commenting helps to share this video with new people, as well as when you subscribe to the channel. I couldn't be more thankful for all the support you guys give. Our Twitter account is up and running and we are over on Rumble as well. Both of those links will be in the description below. If you have anything to add or any thoughts on the video or have any ideas for future videos, just put that in the comments below. Thank you all for your support, and I hope you all have a great day. I will be back very soon with much more. See ya. Don't trust what you see. Don't listen to your senses.